right, good morning. Welcome back to my stream. This is the uh, first day after taking a week off for spring break. So I'm a little rusty and of course all my settings are all messed up. But we'll live with that. I can't hear any sounds, which is great. That's really awesome. Um, other than that, what we should do is just dive right in, I think. Um, switch over here. There we go. Make sure my audio levels are good, at least going out, even if I can't hear them. And... Okay. All right, so we're up and running, finally, after a week off. Um, what we did last, well, two weeks ago, was to work on the uh, compiler stuff, crafting interpreters. We were just starting to work on this section here and trying to figure out the best way to do that. Um, but today, the 25th of April, we're going to um, work on this. And I think I think we're almost done with the roguelike. I think we're very close because we have just this chapter, One Night in the City, which is labeled Dark Elf City 1 here. And then we have the next one, which is Dark Elf Plaza or One Night in the Plaza. Um, and I scanned briefly ahead. I don't normally look ahead, but I scanned briefly ahead just to see how much code was going to be involved. And it looks like this is mostly, I mean, there's a little bit of code here, but it's going to be mostly uh, JSON edits. So it's not going to be as exciting or as um, uh, teaching Rust worthy um, as other chapters have been. Um, but let's get into it. And it may, I think we might actually, this looks short enough that we'll get into the next chapter or uh, win this stream and then maybe finish. And then we just switch back to crafting interpreters uh, for the rest of the week. We'll see. Because there is a bunch of stuff in crafting interpreters I want to do, including fixing the JLocks version of our interpreter so that it passes the tests. Right now it does not. If I look at this, what do we got? We start failing tests right away or after 41 tests there's still 70 that are failing and not all of them are because of formatting issues so we will fix up the formatting issues and then get into the actual bugs but first enough blathering one night in the city let's go over here uh, make sure we're clean Yep, we are good. Get logged. The last thing we did was make the RNG a global mutech lock resource outside of specs, which is an, uh, the best way of making a seeded roguelike, but oh well. That's the way we did it here. And uh, when I do my own, maybe we'll do a smarter, uh, we'll, we'll do a more um, a complex version that makes it more seed like. All right. Uh, the next level of the game is a dark elven city. And just to refresh, let's make sure that this is all up and running. This site can't be reached. Oh no. Do I have a... I must not have the thing running. Okay, let's just kick off the... Um, dev RT rising. Basic TV server. Make that run. Hit reload here. There we go. Okay, so we are running. Let's turn on the error console just to be on the safe side. Nope, oh, not that. There we go. This we can make go away. Come on. All right, there we go. Uh, and if I hit refresh, I can hit refresh a bunch of times. Um, this is still... Okay, that's fine. But we can do this and we can play the game. Good, 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 good. All right, and at some point we should just play through, do a playthrough uh, and see if I can get to the bottom, but we don't have the bottom yet. We, we're still working on that. Next level of the game is a dark elven city. The design document is a bit sparse on details, but here's what we know. It eventually leads to a portal to the abyss. Dark elves are infighty, backstabbing maniacs and should behave as such. Dark elven cities are surprisingly city-like, just deep underground, and lighting will be important. Um, the level builder function controls which map algorithm is called for a given level at a placeholder entry for the new map type. So we're going to do this Dark Elf City here. 
and if I can remember in somewhere in maps is it limestone nope it's not in the map mod map builders mod okay here we go we've got mushroom exit so now we're gonna add 10 dark elf city okay the top of the same file we'll add that dark elves and use it and then we'll create a new dark elves under map builders rs there we go These will all get resorted when I save. Call on reachable Illinois. Oops. Spawning. X end and Y end and BSP interior. All right, and then pub fun, dark elf city. We haven't done one of these in a long time. Um, back when we refactored all the, the map stuff. Um, I don't, I'm gonna leave the println out because we're not actually, we don't have println. We do have console log, but there's no reason to do that, right? That, that's just debugging stuff that it probably accidentally left in. Okay, and then we have a chain to start with BSP and we have a bunch of chain widths, chain width, and I'll just copy and paste and rename things, position, and start, center, Y, start, center. Um, Let's get that fixed and then we have a cull start area starting position again an area ending position for noise spawning and then just return the chain all good so let's change this to call unreachable don't need any arguments to that it's still the starting position but this changes to right this becomes errant ending position Oops, I'm, this should be uppercase here, and this should be uppercase, and this should be end. The ending position is on the left. And then this becomes noise on ink. There we go. Okay. That makes a not at all city like map, just BSP interiors map, but it's a good start. I chose this as the base builder because it doesn't waste any space. I like to imagine that the city is a big warren of interconnected rooms with the poor elf housing in the dangerous spot at the top, so we'll populate this level with relatively normal dark elves and their slaves. Hmm. Okay, adding some dark elves. Okay, so here's where we... So let's just see if this checks. First, this, this should check just fine, uh, except I just typed end and width. type was fixed and we got that building now so we just have here so everything else I think is going to be in the in here right so if we just wanted to put dark elves everywhere it would be simple as adding one line to spawn set JSON in the spawn table dark elf weight min depth max depth that's boring so let's not do that our dark elves are split between clan Arbat clan Barbo and clan Ciro ABC get it yes I do thanks to the abyssal Abyssal influence of the amulet of Yala. They are wrought with terrible infighting and war. Not sure what means what do you think it means. Mm. 
Okay, maybe. Um, we'll worry about the differentiate. We'll worry about differentiating the cleanse in a moment. For now, let's with an apostrophe make some entries to provide three groups of dark elves who hate one another. So in the faction section, which is down here, faction table, we can add three dark elf types here. Dark Elf A, Dark Elf B, and Dark Elf C. Okay, so our Dark Elf A ignores Dark Elf A, but attacks B's and C's. B's ignore B's and attack A's and C's. C's ignore C's and attack A's and B's. That makes sense. Notice how they ignore their own clan and attack the others. That's the key to making a war zone. Our faction system already supports warring groups. We've just not used, used it extensively. Now find the mobs section and duplicate the dark elf three times, once for each faction. Okay, so we can find dark elf. One, two, three. So it's dark elf, and we'll call this our bat, apparently. Um, the colors are all the same, this, but they're in Dark Elf A faction. Then we have a Barbo, and then Dark Elf B faction, and then we have the uh, Ciro, which is Dark Elf C faction. All right, and they all have the same equipment. They were already halfway done, so I think this is going to be really quick. In the spawn table, we want them to appear on level 10. Okay, so it goes all the way back here on the spawn table. Um, let's just copy paste those guys. Put a comma there. All right, hopefully I spelled it correctly. Yep. Okay. If you cargo run now and cheat your way down to depth 10, you'll find yourself in the midst of a war zone between three clans. There's, a com there's combat everywhere and they only pause killing one another as long as long enough to murder the player. If there's a lovely amount of mayhem, the gods of chaos would be proud. Okay, well, I mean, we can kick off a build here. It might take a little while. It generally takes about 30 seconds. And then we can try that out. It recommends God Mode, which I already have coded up. God Mode, No Death. And I added a couple extras. Um, and then all I have to do is refresh. We probably should get rid of this FPS thing, too. Alright, refresh. In the game, turn on God Mode. And then we're going to teleport. Into the woods, onto some caverns, deep onto some caverns. Dwarf Fort, Dwarven Fortress, Mushroom Grove, Mushroom Grove, Mushroom Grove. Here's the Dark Elven City, which is what we just added. And then E, it's an Arbat Dark Elf. Okay, A is attacking B, B is attacking A, C is attacking A, A is attacking. Okay, so they're all attacking one another. Of course, the elf is attacking me. I'm just hitting space to draw him to me. I don't know if I can actually kill him. Let's summon um, a long sword plus three, I guess. And then equip it. D. That should allow me to kill this elf off, hopefully. No? Oh, we're in one of these things. Uh, I can do a reveal. Uh, is this a city or no? I don't know what this is. There's a lot of, a lot of, um, oh, how do I disarm a trap? I don't think we, we have that ability yet. Oh well. Bear trap trigger. So they're, tra they're triggering the traps. I was hoping this guy would see me and come, come at me and tr trigger that trap. All right. So we do have mayhem, as predicted. That's good. Clan differentiation. It's kind of boring having all the clans be identical. The basic dark elf can stay the same, 
but let's add a bit of flavor to make the cleanse feel differentiated. We'll start by making our bat a different color, a lighter red. Replace FG attribute. Uh, with FFAAA, okay. That's easy enough, a pinkish color. We'll take away their crossbows too. They're a melee-oriented clan. You play Scimitar with Scimitar plus one. Okay, so we're gonna take away the crossbow. And replace it with the Scimitar plus one. All right, so they won't have anything to shoot with. They still have the same amount of gold though. All right. Let's, let's also give them leaders, tougher fighters. Arbat Dark Elf leader. Copy paste. Kluna, hi. Good to see you. Um, oh, and they get a scimitar plus two, nice, and a buckler plus one. This did not. Okay. They also deserve some orc slaves. Hop on to that concept, maybe. Come up with a better. Way. We have to add them to the spawn table. Right? Okay. And they're just in dark elf. Okay. And then what we do up at the spawn table um, over here. Weight for the leader is 10. Oh no, it's 7. And then the weight for these guys is 14. Okay. They're probably going to regret their melee focus, but we aren't too concerned for their health. Then Barbo, conversely, will make Barbo quite missile oriented and a little more scarce because it's super dangerous. We'll also give them a dagger instead of a scimitar and change their color to orange. Okay, so we're going to change our color to this. I'm glad you like the music. On, uh, I wish I could hear it. Unfortunately, my sound system is messed up right now, and I can't hear it through my uh, headphones. I gotta figure out why the sound changes every time I start a new stream. All right, so buckler, drought change, our leggings, and Boots. Can I link the sound? Um, I there should be the the name of the sound should be down here. Um, if I set up my, I can't see it on my monitor, but it should be here um, through OBS. Um, they also get okay. Get archers. You get goblin archers. Okay. Oops. Put those in here. Right, and then we got to add them to the faction table, which is going to be here. So Barbo Dark Elves get weighted slightly lower, and then we have the goblin archers. which get 13 for their weight. <clears throat> and then the zero are gonna be powerful and rare. Okay. The basic one looks like this. Is there anything changing here? Oops. Here. Um, this all looks the same. Oh, color changes. They're purple. Hand crossbow, scimitar, buckler, draw change, draw leggings, draw boots. That doesn't change. The level changes though to seven. Let me just check here. Yeah, that's still level six. Okay, so they're they're higher level, which means they're harder to kill. And then we give them leaders, which is this priestess. Hmm. 
and then spiders. There we go. Just like that. And the priestess has crossbows and all that kind of stuff. And the spiders have spider stuff. Okay, plus the um, web attack. All right, if you cargo run the project now, you'll find the dark elves are murdering one another. Okay, so let's just finish out this thing here. We have the dark elf, um, we have the commas to these guys. We have a dark priestess. Uh, we'll wait seven here, six and 10 for the spider. One of the things would be nice is if um, uh, the elves had the ability to summon their support staff, right? Like these Barbo Dark Elves should be able to summon goblin archers once in a great while. Um, we don't have that capability. All right, so all we did was change the um, spawns.json. Um, we do have to rebuild it, unfortunately, because of the way the WASM works. But it should give us a um, where's my recent list? Okay. All right. As soon as this is done, we'll hit refresh and pop down to the Dark Elven City after turning on God mode. One, two, three, four. Six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, and reveal. Okay, see, so, so they're fighting in their different colors. We have a, a barbell goblin, goblin archer fighting a zero dark elf. Okay. Ooh, what's that? The capital E is the leader. I'm not going to be able to hit it with a, a, an old rusty whatever I have. Rusty Longsword. What is this? I picked up the un un unidentified scimitar. Let's try wielding it. And hope it's a oh, plus three. Wow. Not bad. What's this? Venom. Let's learn Venom. Yeah, I have a Venom spell. But they're killing. All they're killing each other. So it kind of makes it easy. You just wait it out, right? Uh, let's set shift uh, control one to attack this guy with venom and see what happens. He's got a dot up four. Go to him up and I kill him. Good. I pick up another unidentified scimitar. All right. So, I mean, I think things are working. It's just that we haven't done very much. All right, so this is the final, the current final chapter in the tutorial. Then we're going to finish this one night in the plaza. And I think this is going to be very similar. Um, let me commit these changes and then we're going to be done so fast. Um, I guess what we can do. Oh, the other thing I like to do in these streams is just play a 7 DRL to kick things off. And I forgot to do that. It's been a while since I've streamed. This is my excuse. Get status. Get. Source Dark Elf City One. Okay, so we'll do this one night in the plaza, and then we should be done. And then tomorrow, I guess we will work on we'll switch back to crafting interpreters because I don't have a design yet for my the roguelike I want to make, and that's something I need to work on before I stream because streaming design is not inherently interesting i guess all right uh the city level was deliberately messy the heroes fighting through cramped sprawling dark elf undercity facing different noble houses troops who were also intent upon killing one another it makes for fast-paced tight combat the last part of the city is the plaza which is meant to offer more of a contrast a park in the city holds a portal to the abyss and only the most affluent slash influential dark elves can build here. So despite being underground, it's more of an outdoor city type of feeling. 
So let's think a bit about what makes up the plaza level. A decent sized park defended by some tough baddies. Well, we can add something demonic here for the first time since we're right next to the portal to their home. Some larger buildings, statues, fountains, and similar niceties. Continuing to think about dark elves, they aren't really known for their civic planning. They are at heart a chaotic species. So we want to avoid the feeling that they really planned out their city and meticulously built it to make sense. In fact, not making sense adds to the surreality. <laughs> is that a word? It, surreal is, but surreality, yeah, right there. Okay. Uh, generating the plaza. Just like we have for other level builders, we need to add a placeholder. All right, so we'll do that. Um, it's builder's mod. There we go. And we have a 10, so we're going to add 11. Dark Elf Plaza. This time I won't typo it. Now open Map Builder's Dark Elves and create a new Map Builder function. Okay, so we're going to just... Dark Elves, we just put it right in here. Okay. And this will just be Dark Elf Plaza. Uh, we'll start with generating the BSP interior map. That'll change, but it's good to get something compiling. So that's interesting. We did center, center here, and we're going to do left, center. Oh, and, and then we don't reset the um, starting position. Okay. Okay. Deliberately poor city planning. Now that we have the exact same map as the previous level, let's build a generator to create the plaza. We'll get started by making a boring empty map just to validate that our map builder is working. At the end of Dark Elves, paste the following. Right, so this is good. But we're actually we're actually getting to write some Rust code today. We need the initial Builder, builder map, time, time. Oops, time, time. Actually, before I do this, I'll do a quick cargo check. There was something else I wanted to change in my config. And I do have a few minutes. Ooh, I do have a few minutes here. Um, uh, what was it? Rust. There was a way to set up a few extra um, commands. Because right now, right now, what do we have? Uh, oh, it's not in here. It's in the config, right? Config, and then. We, there, there was the oh yeah right here the uh, command to do the GD so GD exists but I thought there was another uh, it's another thing we could set up using LSP so here's where it registers the server and then we have a whole bunch of things just disabled Just to stop things from being annoying. There were there are a few other uh, features that I wanted to. Maybe it's not Rust Analyzer. Maybe it's not Rust LSP. Yeah, this is similar to what I was looking for, but not the same thing. Hmm. 
So maybe it's not LSP, maybe it's, it's, uh, it's Neo then must. I write them in Rust. These are Rust tools. And yeah, this is the same links we've been finding. Oh, right. So what I'm looking for is, yeah, this kind of thing here with, with the, the shortcuts where we could um, just look for code completion and stuff like that. Hmm. Hang on. Let me look at something off camera just for a second. And see if I can find what I'm looking for. Because I thought that... Hmm. Yeah, maybe it's... Hmm. I'm just a little clustered right now because let's do cd config and then what do we have here we have this no lua and we have this init lua yeah so here here's where gd gets defined but then we also have it in here Right. We have this end map here for GD, and then we have this thing here on LSP buffer enabled GD. Uh, Rust LSP NeoVim um, on attach. Yeah, so I've I've already been looking at these, haven't I? Here's on attach. To enable Rust Analyzer settings, visit this. Really? What is this? Whoa, there's a lot of them, huh? Okay, that's too many. <laughs> I just want a basic, um, a basic LSP. for Rust, and I'm not finding it, of course. I mean, we have, um, like, we have GD for, for definition, right? But there's also a way to get the declaration, VSP, uh, I think it's like vim.lsp.buff, just like this is. Instead of definition, we have declaration. So we can actually see where it's being used. Yeah, not that. And I want to add, maybe add a um, on attach here. I'm sorry for this distraction. I just wanted to get this working, and apparently this is not. Ooh. This is similar to what I'm looking for. Except this has leader in front of it instead of CMD. This doesn't have a leader in front of it. All right, maybe that's something I do off camera. Anyway, let's go back to this. And what, where were we? We were in the Dark Elves. Oops. There we go. Okay. All right, so we're adding initial builder. Builder map and tile type. Like that. There is a command to do a format. Let me see if I can at least at least do that because I want to be able to just, you know, say, okay, do format without having to save the file. Because if I save the file now, it'll format it. But I just want to format it real quick. Um, and I think it's Sorry, I, I'm gonna have to look again. Uh, formatting here, K. 
can I do this and put that in my save uh, config and then init Lua. How hard is this going to be? Map. I don't know what the end does. Um, space. We'll put a space for F. Will that do the trick? And then add this command. And then I don't know what this little thing at the end is. And then hope and pray that I didn't break anything. Um, let's see. It didn't complain at startup. And if I put a return here and then hit space F. Nope. Dang. So whatever I did didn't work. I want to be able to to mm -hmm. not sure what okay all right let me comment that line out actually um what's the comment Oh, it's two dashes, right? There. Okay. All right. That's it. Back to here. Dark. All right. So that's there. Um, and now we're going to have the Plaza Map Builder. Does it need to be pu uh, public? So impl initial map builder plaza. I guess so. Map builder. Fn build map. Cell build data. Build a map. Really? Self empty map. Build data. Okay. And that's all that does, and then we have FN MT map. That built data map tiles I can do it mutt for each T T is tile type four. Alright, so that's a very easy map to build. And then we're gonna change this to start with instead of BSP, we're gonna start with the plaza map builder. I'm going to just try this without the pub and see what happens. If you run the game now and teleport down to the last level, the plaza is a giant open space full of people killing you, killing both you and one another. Okay. With the same typo. Alrighty. There's Plaza Map Builder. Um, let's generate that and see what it looks like. The plaza needs to be divided into zones, which contain plaza content. That's similar to what we did for Voronoi maps, but we aren't looking to create cellular walls, just areas in which to place content. Let's start by making a basic Voronoi cell area. Extend your map builder. Oh, I, you know what I did? Oh yeah, the Voronoi spawning, right? That works. Extend your, your map builder to call new function name spawn zones. Let's take a look at this region first. Um, and 
here we are. I reveal the map. Yeah, it's just a giant area. And we can't see all the creatures on it because they're not within our vision range, but um, there's certainly stuff. Okay. I have a giant empty map. I found it quite entertaining, but it's not what we want. Right. So, okay, we're going to add spawn zones. Um, so we're going to call empty map and then we're going to call spawn zones. Self spawn zones with build data. All right, and then we have to write that. We'll start by taking our previous Voronoi code and make it always have 32 seeds and use Pythagoras for distance. Okay. figure out the type. Take a look at the entry API, which is where I had a link to it before. Oh, yeah, this is something I want to do. Um, okay, Rust entry API, because I think there's a better way to do that. We should it should increment it right if we want 32 seeds we'll always have 32 seeds and we want to we want to um oh yeah there's a limb right there oh this is a vec not a hash map so this is doing a um oh then search each time okay that's fine and that's not going to be long but I mean, it's only 32. Oh, F32, 32. Oops. Got the open on that. Okay. Let my membership back bang. 0U32, I32. Build data map with as U size times. Build data map height. As you size. Right? That's good. And then for I come a vid in for our my membership. Either or not. Enumerate. So we're just generating a bunch of zeros and working our way through them and then determining where we are in the map. And y is divided, oops, divided by width. And then for seed, pause in Illinois seeds, iter. Enumerate. RLTK. 
Okay, point new xy cause dot one. Voronoi distance of seed equals seed distance. Okay, and then Voronoi distance sort by a b. There's a dot one dot partial compare b dot one on that, and then vid is equal to Voronoi distance of zero dot zero as i thirty two. Spawning code will go here. Okay, so what this is doing, if I can read this without looking at the description, is we come up with 32 locations, XY locations on the map, which has a vid X. So it contains the XY location, plus it contains the same data as an RLTK point. We then create this distance map for each one of them. How far are they from something? We then loop over the entire map location. We have an X, Y. We look at the seeds and we measure the distance to that seed from the point that we're at to the seed. And we store it in Voronoi distance, which is these. And then we sort by that and then we store in our membership, the, sh the shortest one, the closest one. Isn't that going to overwrite? I guess not. I guess each one's going to have whatever's the shortest one. And we did something similar to this in um, one of the advents of code. Um, a few years ago, I think. All right, so at the end of new spawn zones function, we have an array named for our membership that categorizes every tile into one of 32 zones. The zones are guaranteed to be contiguous. Let's write some quick code to count the sizes of each zone to validate our work. Make a list of zone sizes and call the empty ones. Well, first let's make sure that this checks. Let's fix any mistakes we have first before we keep going. Um, this four is missing a close brace. Oops, I have a comma where a comma doesn't belong. Okay, so that's clean. Let's do this now. Um, Again, we're going to see if Rust can um, back with capacity 32. If Rust can infer the type for zone in 0 to 32, let no um, tiles. left with just in zone sizes just the size of each zone that has more than um, zero tiles in and let's print that out it says print line here so we're going to just do a console log rltk console log format back um, oh i guess we can just say zone sizes like that that's all we need to do we should check Let's, let's build it. Why not? And we can see that come out on the console down here. Um, let's see, I think it's 80 by 50, right? No, 
Oh, 80 times 50. 4,032. So each zone should be up. The zones should average 125 in size. 125 tiles. All right, so let's refresh this in the new game. Go into God mode. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. All right, and so these are the zones, 119, 63, 77, 244. And there are 32 of them. None of them ended up with zero size, which is fine. Um, yeah, I mean, here we have some small zones, like 55 here. That's pretty small. And then we have some larger ones, 345. That's a pretty big one. Okay. I think it's working. So we know that the zone creation works. There are 32 zones, none of which is, none of which are excessively tiny, although some are quite large. Let's sort the list by size descending. All right, we'll get rid of the console log and just say zone sizes. Okay, this yields a weighted importance map. The big zones are first and smaller zones last. We use this to spawn content in order of importance. The big portal park is guaranteed to be the largest area. What does that mean, portal park? I guess it just means we're creating a portal park. Oh yeah, we're creating a portal park, okay. Here's the start, so this should have been introduced a little sooner. But here's the start of our creation system. Start making zonal terrain. Zone sizes here. Alright. Great. I'm gonna pick up an I and a zone. And what are we going to do? Match I. Just checking on zero. Okay. Maybe that'll get expanded later. Self for tall park. Build data for my membership and zone. And then ignore everything else. I'm, ex I'm ex expecting this to be extended a little bit. The placeholder signature for portal park is as follows. Okay. FN Portal Park. It's a slice of I32s, and then we have the zone, which is also an I32. Okay, so that's Portal Park. That should check. Nope. Like for each. Oh, I've got a this. And I put a space there. Okay, good. We'll use this pattern to gradually populate the plaza. For now, we'll skip the portal park and add some other features first solid rock. Let's start with the simplest. We're going to turn some of the smaller zones into solid rock. These might be areas the elves haven't mined yet, or more likely, they left them in place to hold the cavern up. We're going to use a feature we haven't touched before, a match guard. You can make, you can make match work for greater than as follows. I, if I is greater than 20, self-fill zone. So, so okay. So the, the last 12 zones. The 12 smallest zones are going to get filled. Floor, right? Not a wall. Wall. Because we're filling it in. Okay, and then we can just write that here. Same signature, right? Um, except it's going to add a 
one last one here, tile type, tile type. And it's going to look like this. dot iter dot enumerate dot filter tile zone tile zone equals zone and then for each idx build data map tiles idx equals print tile type simple enough All right, we have four warnings, probably because we're not using some stuff. But we can check this out now. Yeah, Portal Park is not using any of the any of its arguments. All right, and refresh as soon as this is done building. go begin your game okay so god mode and then one two three four five six seven eight nine ten all right and reveal okay so we can see that some of the zones are now filled in and these are the, the 12 small zones wow this is very slow to to walk through here That's kind of neat, right? We got we have a few um, Voronoi zones filled in, and then the small ones. Okay, cool. This already injects a little life into our map. Yeah. So pools. C caves tend to be dank, wet places. The dark elves probably enjoy a few pools. Plazas are known for magnificent pools. Let's extend to the default matching to sometimes create zone pools. All right, so instead of doing nothing on default, what we'll do is we will say match, create, RNG, roll, dice, one to six, and it's one. Either deep water or shallow water. Tile type deep water. And two will be shallow water. And then everything else will get ignored. Right? We don't need the roll, so there's no reason to do it that way. Okay, let's check this out. So that we can see little pools here. Um, let's try building it. See if we see how if we aren't matching anything else, we roll a dice, roll a die. If it comes up one or two, we add a pool of varying depth. Actually, adding a pool is just like adding solid rock, but we add water instead. One of the things would be nice is if we just we filled in with deep water and then just did the edges with. Um, shallow water that would be a little neater right um, I wouldn't know how to do that off the top of my head um, with the Voronoi spawning system we have but I'm sure we could figure it out with, with a little bit of thought all right so there's the uh, yeah so we have the shallow water here and then we have the deep water that we can't can't enter and we can't see past right that's why this region here is dark right whereas we can walk through um, the water here the shallow water okay
interesting. Very cool. This is all deep water. Yeah, nice. The addition of some water features continues to bring the zone to life. Stalactite parks. Stalactites and presumably their twin stalagmites can be a beautiful feature of real caves. They're a natural candidate for inclusion in a dark elf park. It would be nice to have a bit of color in the city, so let's surround them with grass. They are a carefully cultivated park offering privacy for whatever dark elves do in their spare time. You don't want to know. So stalactites are the ones that hang from the ceiling. Um... I guess if there were going to be a park that you'd walk around, you'd have the stalagmites coming up from the ground. Um, and then you'd walk around those. Just to double check here, there's a mound or tapering column rising from the floor of the cave. Right, and stalactites come from the ceiling. From the roof of a cave. Yeah. Um, Add it to the unknown zone options. Okay, we'll do that. Which is down here. Run Ross, hi. Um, Run Ross says, looks like a really interesting tutorial project. After working through so much, would you recommend following? I Yeah, I would. I mean, if you like roguelikes and you like Rust, uh, I would recommend it. There's a link in the... Um, the description, but I, I'll throw it in here too in case you want an easy way to, to grab it. Throw it in chat. Um, yes, I would recommend this. Um, it's, it's not complete yet. There's one more chapter yet to come which hasn't been written. If we look here, uh, Dark Elf Plaza, there should be one more chapter called The Abyss, um, and hopefully that's going to come out soon. Um, but we'll see. Um, and when it does, I'll come back to this. But meanwhile, I will switch off to a different um, a different topic from my stream. Because uh, we're almost done. We're halfway done with this chapter. I think we're going to finish it before the end of the stream. All right. So we, we have one, two. We just need to add three. Um, self like See, I think, I think, really think he means stalagmites. Because that, that's what you would walk around in a plaza. You're not going to stare at the ceiling, right? So I'm just going to switch it to stalagmite and get it wrong, right? Oops. There we go. Uh, Ren Ross says, I'll give it a try, but it's intimidating to see how long it is. Well, that's the thing. I mean, you can. So there's two things to that. You can stop anytime, right? But. He takes it from the ground up. You know, you don't you don't need to know any rust going into this, and he, you know, he walks you through how to set up rust, how to install it. I started basically with a completely empty workspace, and everything that you need is in here um, to actually get it going. Um, I think the only thing I had to do. He says you can't run wasm from a local file source. You need to put it into a web server. So all I did was install um, basic HTTP server, which I think you can just use, say, cargo install on that. I'm just going to run that just to see um, what it does. And, th and that's all you need to do. And then just, you know, like I said, everything is here. Um, I'd love to integrate this into Cargo Web or similar to provide simple process for compiling and serving your games. I haven't made this work yet. I'm not familiar with Cargo Web. Maybe that's something we can do after I'm done with this tutorial. We can figure out how Cargo Web works. Uh, this is cool. But yeah, definitely, I mean, if you're interested in Rust and you enjoy playing roguelikes, I would 100% recommend this. Okay, we got a static mic display. I'm going to let this continue running in the background, and then we'll take a look at it when it's done. I've convinced you. Good. I'm uh, not very persuasive with my kids, so I'm glad I'm able to be persuasive in other contexts. <laughs> um, FN static mic display.
Okay, so this is... Oh, I see. We're going to do... Okay, I'm still going to call it Stagmite Display. Boronoi Membership Hitter. Mm. Filter. And what are we filtering on? Tile Zone. So we're just looking for the specific zone that's being passed in. So we're not passing in just a Vor Voronoi region. We're passing in the entire map. And then we're going to just look for the zone that we're trying to play with for each IDX. And inside the zone, it has the index of the tile that we need. Data and IDX. Match, rate, NG, dice, 1 to 10. That's a 1. I'll type. Style. Right? Yeah. Tight. And two, I'll type stalagmite, and then everything else is I'll type this. Right? And that's the end of that function. That's the whole thing. And cargo check. Okay. Ignored pat yeah, so all you have to do is cargo install basic HTTP server. And then um, I also had had to create, because I didn't want to run it by hand each time, I just created a little uh, command that builds the WASM target and then runs a WASM bind gen on that uh, to generate the, uh, the WASM files, the J JavaScript and the, the WASM data itself. And that's all on not here. Uh, it's it's all in my. Here it is, in my uh, workspace on GitHub. If you wanted to steal that, that's fine. Or if you get Cargo Web working, that would be cool, and you give them some uh, feedback. All right, parks and sacrifice areas. Oh, should we should we check this out first? Let's check this out. Let's see if this. Um, we have stalactite regions. And 30 seconds later, we can hit refresh. There we go. Uh-oh. Oh, I killed it. That's right. Uh, I went... There. Easy enough to restart. There we go. And God mode and jump down to the... Ooh, this should be called Dark Elven Plaza, right? Yeah, and we have these funky characters which um, are stalactites and stalagmites with grassy areas in them. Okay. Um, this I want to change. Let me change that before I forget. There we go. All right, so we have stalactite and stalagmite regions, uh, or sorry, a park region with stalactite, stalagmites, and grass. And now we're going to a few areas of vegetative cover with seating adds to the park feel. These should be larger areas. That's the dominant theme of the zone. I don't really picture dark elves sitting around listening to a nice concert. So let's go with an altar in the middle, complete with bloodstains. Notice how we're using or statement in our match to match both the second and third largest zones. Oh, I see. So we're building two parks that are different to the stack stalactite displays. Okay. I see it. This is one or two. Self park. Okay. 
And then this is what park looks like. Actually populating the park is slightly more convoluted. Let's make the convolution happen. What else is there? Looks like there's oh, seeds. Did I miss something up here? I did. Look at that. Build data of Voronoi membership in zone. Build data of Voronoi membership zone. And then this has seeds, I think, which is not in his function signature. So that means we need to dive into his code again, which is where? Not bracket lib. Here we are. And we're on chapter 74. 75. All right, so we're under source, map builders, and dark elves. Self dot park. Voronoi seeds. Look at that. So that's different. All right, do we have Voronoi seeds? And it looks like Portal Park is also going to get Voronoi seeds, but we haven't gotten that far yet. Uh, we do have Voronoi seeds up here. So we can pass them in down here. Okay. Looks like we're passing by reference. All right, problem solved. Let's stick it down here. Uh, seeds, which is a slice of U size and RLPK points. Two points. Like this. Okay, good. Uh um let's set up zone tiles. Tile zone. Tile zone. Zone. We should make make this a function, right? Um IDX. Rather than um having it a I have to repeat it for each one because we did it here, right? We're doing it here. These three together. These three together. These three together, right? We, there should be a way to um, functionalize that, right? IDX and then collect. Oh, and we do need to specify. Okay. So let me put this back, back of view size. So collect knows what to collect. Start all grass. Must have messed up something here. Because the formatting isn't working right. Oops. Oh, I did. I messed it up right here. There we go. No, still messed up. Looks right. That looks right. That looks right. Hmm. Okay, if I close that, is it going to complain at me? Yeah, tile zone. Oh, well, that's an easy fix, but. No, okay, so why is it? Oh, there we go. Okay, it's just messed up. Okay, zone, tiles, iter, four each. Data tiles dx is type type grass. Okay. And then add a stone area in the middle. Okay. So the seeds are just the center of the right, that makes sense. It's not going to be the center of the area, it's just the center of the Voronoi region. Okay, center. 
center dot x minus 2 all the way to center dot x plus 2. Roll the dice. And six is greater than two. Roll data map. Blood stains. Insert. Okay. So that's adding the stone area in the middle. Okay, very good. Uh, with an altar. Okay. Yep, that works. Neat. And then chairs for spectators. Okay. <laughs> This if build data map tiles IDX is tile type grass and create RG times six is equal to zero. No, one doesn't really matter. Um, build data spawn list push IDX. We start by collecting a list of available tiles. Uh, then we cover them all in nice grass, find the center point of the Voronoi zone. It'll be the seed that generated, right? And cover that area with road. Spawn an altar in the middle, some random blood stains, and a bunch of chairs. It's all spawning we've done before, but pulled together to make a not entirely pleasant theme park. Park areas look sufficiently chaotic. Right, comma. All right, let's check out that. And we're going to add walkways. At this point, there's no guarantee that you can actually traverse the map. It's entirely possible that water and walls will coincide in just the wrong way to block your progress. That's not a good thing. Let's use the system we've encountered when we created the first Voronoi Builder to identify edges between Voronoi zones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And replace the edge tiles with roads. This ensures that there's a pathway between zones as well as giving a nice honeycomb effect across the map. All right, so let's first take a look here. Okay, so now it says plaza. That's good. Good feel. This is deep water, so we can't cross it, but we can walk across the grass. Um, where's our zones of with altars? Okay, here's grass with a bunch of chairs, and there's a bloodstain covered altar here. Um, altar triggers. It doesn't say what it did, it just triggered because I stood on it. Alter triggers. I don't know what it's triggering, but it's triggering something. Okay, that's working. So now we're going to add walkways. Um, so we're going to start by adding a call to the end of spawn zones that calls the road builder. Okay. Which is where? Here, spawn zones. Oh, we're adding it to the end of spawn zones. Okay. I guess it doesn't matter. Self make roads. I thought it was going to go up in the previous function. Data. Ship. Okay, now we actually have to build some roads. Most of this code is the same as the Voronoi edge detection. 
Instead of placing floors inside the zone, we're placing roads on the edge. Okay, so we'll go down here. Um, it's a short function, make roads. that and then for y for x in oops this should be a one width see if neighbors is greater than one. Oh, so if there's any tile in current zone that's not the same as my zone, then we must be on an edge tile. Okay, that makes sense. If do it um, as um, I-32. Neighbors equals this. Right? And it's not equals, it's plus equals. And we do it that way. Um, and then minus one becomes plus one. And change and this is minus one and this is plus one. And then we say if neighbors is greater than one, and the map tiles on x is, is tile type road. There we go. Uh, let's see if this compiles. Build data map.xyidx. All right, we still haven't built the um, the park part. That's why we're getting this this portal part. With this in place, the map is passable. Roads delineate the edges without looking too square. Okay, so we'll see a road that goes all along here. And I guess that's how we can also do this deep water versus shallow water pools, making the edges uh, shallow water and everything else deep water. There's the exit. Okay. Begin the game, God mode, and then teleport, teleport, teleport. And our roads look different because we're using a different character. This looks like walls, doesn't it? Um, but we have actual roads like allow us to go from area to area unless we're blocked by a creature okay so each one of the regions now has um, and some of them are just empty but some of them are with these altars and everything if I get close enough to see it Okay, neat. Neat, okay, cleaning up the spawns. Currently the map is very chaotic and quite likely to kill you very fast. There's big open areas chock full of baddies, traps. Why would you build a trap in the park? And items strewn around. Chaos is good, but there's such a thing as too much randomness. We'd like to have a map make some sense in a random sort of way. Let's start by completely removing the random entity spawner from the builder chain. So 
So that's just removing this one line here. This gives you an enemy free map, albeit one that still has some chairs and altars. This is a theme park map, so we're going to retain some control over what spawns in a given area. It will be light on assistance to the player. We're merely at the end, so hopefully they stocked up. Let's start by putting some monsters in the park slash altar areas. One dark elf family or another is there, leading to clusters of enemies. Now find the park function and we'll extend the add chairs section. Alright, this is our park function, right? Yes. And this is our chairs section in there. And we're going to do this. So this is what we're doing now for chairs. And chairs for spectators and the spectators themselves. So let them know about this. just like that and then it closes that and then we can do something similar for two and three. Alright, so this becomes Barbo and Barbo Godwin Archer. Okay, and then we have, if it's grass, then we're going to match on a roll. This, um, for one, it's going to be a chair. It's going to be let to spawn. Like that, and then build data spawn list push. At our IDX available enemies to spawn to size, to string. And everything else is nothing. Simple enough. We're doing a couple of new things here. We're randomly assigning an owner to the park, A, B, or C, groups of dark elves. Then we make a list of available spawns. Oh, okay, I get it. There. Yep. You make a list of available spawns for each and a spawn and spawn in a few that in that park. This ensures the park starts as owned by one faction. Since they can often see one another, Carnage will commence, but at least it's themed to Carnage. We're going to leave the stalactite galleries and pools empty of enemies. They're just window dressing and provide a quiet area to hide slash rest. See, we're not being totally unfair. Now that we've got the basic shape of the map down, it's time to focus on the park. The first thing to do is to stop the exit from spawning randomly. Change the basic map builder to not include exit placement. Done. That leaves you with no exit at all. We want to place it in the middle of Portal Park. Let's extend the function signature to include the Borno seeds 
and use the seed point to place the exit just like we did for the other parks. Alright, so poor Toll Park. Right. Like what we did for the, um, the other park. Now let's make the portal park stand out a bit by covering it in gravel. Okay. So let's add the seeds here. Let's um, a slice of new size LTK point tuples. Grab zone tiles. Iter, enumerate, filter. Zone tile zone tile zone equals zone map. IDX, IDX, collect. Okay. So we grab all the indices for that particular zone. Start all gravel. Now we're done with the warnings because we're now actually using everything. Next, we'll add some altars around the exit. This gives a pretty good start to at the exit to Abyss. You have the exit in the right place, creepy altars, and a clearly marked approach. It's also devoid of risk, other than the elves killing one another all over the map. Let's make the exit a little more challenging by adding a boss fight to the exit. It's the last big push before Abyss, so it's a natural spot for it. I randomly generated a demon name and decided to name the boss Vokoth. Let's spawn it one tile adjacent to the exit. This won't do anything at all until we define Volkoth. 
or want to talk about it, let's take a quick trip down memory lane in Spawn's JSON and remind ourselves how we defined the Black Dragon. All right. The Black Dragon was red. I remember that. Um, and it was a 2x2 two two X size, Y size. All right. And it had special attacks, acid breath, spell, and... That's a really tough monster and it makes for a good template for the abyssal, abyssal dragon. Let's clone it and build an entry for Vokoth. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to check to make sure this checks. Oops, seven warnings. Map dot x y. There we go. Okay. And if we edit Raws, we can add Vokoth, I guess, as a mob. Let's look for Black Dragon. There it is. And we'll just put it right next to him. Okay. And it's an ampersand for Demon. It's also a 2x2. Two now, if you play the game, you'll find yourself facing a nasty demon monster at the exit to Abyss. Okay, and it should look like this with the with the um, altars around it and the exit. All right, let's try building it. See what see what we see. Come on, save. There we go. Uh, wrap up. Oh, okay. So that's the end of this section, and that's good timing too, because this is a good uh, place to end the stream. And then I will just keep an eye out for um, when the final level is added, and then I'll, I'll make a stream for that. But what it means is that tomorrow I'm going to switch back to crafting interpreters, and maybe we'll be able to finish up. I don't know. Finish um, sea locks port uh this week we'll see um and i'm also going to look at doing this guy uh the phil opperman philip opperman's uh, blog os um, and that's going to come up pretty soon that looks like a, a fun thing to do all right so let's run this begin the new game go into god mode teleport down to the plaza reveal and there's the exit we can see it right away so we know exactly where to go oh that's interesting what if we started in deep water there would be no way to get out right there's the altar and there's the demon okay Vokoth strong and healthy level eight um, maybe it's time to summon long sword plus three and then equip it um, so it won't take us forever to kill this guy wow 41 HP wow I can't connect oh, I can't hit him I don't have enough, I don't have enough uh, whatever it takes to hit. Quickness, maybe? I need to boost my quickness in order to hit this guy. And I don't have a cheat code for boosting. Um... It would also be good for the, for the, um, uh, for the boss monsters, the, the black dragon and this demon, Vokoth, to have a health bar somewhere right just like they do for you know for many boss monsters you see the health bar all right so i th so we're done with this this um tutorial as far as we can go um once i don't see i don't see him attacking uh Blokoff here so once we um, once he releases the next chapter, I'll I'll do it. But meanwhile, let's do a clippy real quick. Make sure we're not missing anything here. I didn't see anything that that 
looked like it might trigger Clippy, but you never know. There is one. Look at this. This public function might do reference a raw pointer, but it's not marked unsafe. Oh, right. We were playing around with that before for the dispatcher. I forgot all about that. We have uh, the, the, um, the two different types of dispatching. Multi-thread. Right. And then the single thread, or what's the other one called? Um, dispatcher is called, yeah, single thread. There it is. No, oh, I don't know. It's marked unsafe. Um, I'm not going to worry about these guys for now. And then the method dispatch doesn't need immutable reference. And I forget, well, oh yeah, we had to do it that way because this guy needed, uh, the single thread needed a mutable reference and so, and they had to have the same function signature. All right, so I'm leaving that alone. Okay, and then git commit, dash n, and this one's just called dark elf plaza. And let's push that up. And where is it? There it is. There they are. Okay, so we're good. Um, tomorrow, I'm going to switch back to crafting interpreters, and we're going to just keep keep um, moving along with that. Um, what section are we on right now? I'm just scanning here. It's 17 chapter. We're in chapter 17. We started that, and you can see from the um, scroll bar, we're about three quarters of the way done. Um, and we need to clean up the way I did push it, but I'm not, yeah, let's see, and then source, what is this in, compiler. I didn't like the way this was working, and then I did actually get, let's pull it. Um, I got a PR. From Daria Sukonina, and they they submitted the PR based on um, I was struggling with how to handle this part here, uh, uh, and their answer was to just do that. I, I think there's also a different way to do it, um, but well, I'll talk about that more tomorrow. But I just wanted to get get the PR. Um, I, I merged the PR, I just didn't pull it into my workspace here. So now I've done. Um, so thank you to, uh, to Zeta Numbers for that uh, fix. And we'll dig into it a little more tomorrow as we look at these rules and determine if there's a better way to do this rather than generating a brand new parse rule every time we need a parse rule. Because uh, this is a, a simpler way to do it with it all pre-compiled. So that's that. Um, yeah, and I need to figure out what I'm going to do with my roguelike. i got to design one, and then we'll start working on one on stream. Uh, that should be fun. Thanks, everyone, for watching, and I will see you tomorrow with Crafting Interpreters. Take care.